me draw out the truth and get her to tell the truth when she's clearly lying. How do I draw out the truth? So a woman is hiding something. She's not telling you the truth. How do I draw it out? How do I get her to tell me the truth? Right? So there's detecting the lie, but then there's having her tell you the truth. How do you get her to do that? And believe it or not, getting her to do that is a specific skill. Right? And so I'm going to go over the basics of that today. So it takes direct training. It's like learning this for me now is like trying to learn a martial art, you know, from a video. All right. We have to actually, although it is over Zoom and stuff, we have to interact one-on-one -on -one or in group settings, not just be on a YouTube video for you to passively watch, for you to truly know how to implement this stuff. But it's good for you to know that it's there. If you want additional things, that's it. That's what those links are for. And it starts with the free one. Just jump on the email list. Okay. And be a part of that community. How do I draw out the truth and get her to tell the truth when she's clearly lying? Like we know she's lying. Okay. So starts off, these conversations should always start off with Luca. And I have videos on Luca. It's a communication model stands for listen, understand, seek clarity and action. Okay. I'm not going to belabor Luca, but watch that video like several times over because that will save your relationships. Okay. That communication model. It's a leadership communication model. When you're in charge, you are using Luca. All right. Women use ENSA. That's also included in the video. And so go look at that. But there's, it's, it's when you have a power dynamic, which every relationship is, there's a way to communicate, communicating like equal negotiating partners is a failed way to communicate. That's not a way that relationship partners communicate. That's how people do business deals. All right. That's how you might communicate with your buddy or your friends um, when you're negotiating. Sure. But relationships aren't a negotiation. You, you should be on the same side of the table, working towards the same goals and helping each other to see each other's perspectives in order to define those goals. Not on opposite side of the tables negotiating, not on, you know, um, you know, not, not where you're trying to have equalness in our communication, which doesn't exist because there's a power dynamic. So, so go look at Luca. But in that, that's how you're going to start. It's mainly you're listening. You're asking questions. And as she's talking, you're not trying to rebuttal her and think about what you're going to say. Your goal going into it, even if you know, like you've caught, like you've known that she's not telling the truth, you've basically got the evidence. Don't go into these conversations like, listen, I know you fucking blah, blah, and start coming at her. Because that does not, you want, you think you know the truth. You know she's lying. You know there's evidence of maybe something else going on, foul play. She could have been caught dead to rights doing something very wrong in a sense. But you don't know her, what went on in her head, how she's thinking about it. You don't know what specific details are there. You don't know what a lot of things. And chances are you don't know a course of action going forward there's going to be people that'll jump in the chat and they're going to say well if my girl if your girl is dishonest just break up with her bro like there's other that's great advice if your girl is dishonest and there's you know she doesn't have integrity yeah break up with her great advice you won't do that hey if you break up you break up if that does happen rarely does it happen that straightforward what happens is even if you catch your dead to rights you, there's generally conversations happening there's generally you wanting more information. Even if just to under, even if you're settled on breaking up with her, there's just like you want to understand more. You can't help it. It's part of your natural human condition. And it's a good thing because of course you want to know more, just to it, some more information may help you not to get in trouble next time, too, right? I'm not saying to have a weak framework. I mean, if somebody breaks your absolute breaks your non-negotiable boundaries, yeah, sure, break up. And there's no shame in not wanting a conversation at all. And just, you know, having an amicable breakup, there's no shame in that. But, but I know for a fact for all of the internet alphas out there who will say that 
as if they've come across some sort of prophetic information, you know, like they don't do that. I have been coaching men for years, thousands of men and women, quite a few women, quite a few women, right? Not quite thousands in the women category, but it doesn't matter. I've been coaching relationships and people for a while. They don't do that. Y'all don't do that. So let's talk about what you do. Once there was a caveman named Grok who had eyes for the lovely Neela. Neela was the most beautiful cave woman in the tribe with her sparkling eyes, infectious laughter, and fat booty. But Grok wasn't the only one smitten by her. All the Chads and Tyrones of the land wanted her too. He tried different ways to attract her, showing off his paris with a spear, doing favors, bringing gifts, and even serenading her under the moonlit sky. But Neela never seemed to return his affections. She was always kind to Grok, but Grok was only 5 foot 10, and Neela only had eyes for the 6 foot tall Chads, or so he thought. Determined more than ever, Grok decided to do a pickup artist boot camp in a faraway land. He built up his confidence and learned how to talk to hundreds of cave stasis, even winning the affection of a few. But when Grok came home to use his newfound skills on Neela, he could sense that same disinterest in her eyes. He could get average Stacys to want to bear his children, but could not win over Neela or any cave woman as beautiful as she. The pickup artists told Grok it's a numbers game and that he had to sleep with thousands of drunk Stacys to get a beauty like Neela. Confused, Grok went to the secret societies of different color pills for advice. But all they could offer were different chants of, just next to her bro, and she only bangs chads over and over again. If only I could learn real seduction skills to make Neela fall in love with me, Grok thought. Neela went on to live happily ever after, having babies with a man named Og. Og had secretly learned sexpionage skills. Og was 5'5". Five five. The problem with pickup courses today is that they rely on the numbers game. You talk to hundreds of girls and finally a chick wants to sleep with you. And usually these aren't the women of your dreams. Sexpionage is my new course that will train you how to actually seduce the women that you want. Not just get dates with women who you aren't that excited about. You will learn deep persuasion skills borrowed from the elite corners of the espionage world that will train you how to persuade anyone and how to seduce anyone from the woman you just met to your wife or girlfriend. Enrollment opens April 22nd and closes on the 26th. Click the link and don't miss this opportunity. It's the only one you'll get this year. you have conversations when you have that conversation if you come at it with i found this i know you're lying to me this and that and the other or if you come at it tense with this accusatory framework you're not going to get the truth out of her all right you're more likely going to push her into omitting information using influence doing deceptive techniques to try to get the spotlight off of her you're, she's going to get uncomfortable and she's going to get a sense of fear and anxiety. She will not help that. Okay. Her principles will not, she could have principles of integrity more than likely though. If you're coming out at her though, with this happening, I know something's wrong and it's very accusatory. Even somebody with integrity principles will fall to what their monkey brain does, which is to protect themselves. So if you force her into self-protection, rather than having open communication. And if you do that, because your inner game cannot handle handling conflict, cannot handle somebody screwing you over. That's an inner game thing. I'm not saying you should accept someone screwing you over, but your inner game means that you can actually be the alpha, not the internet alpha, but the real alpha, and have an open, honest, calm, calibrated discussion with somebody who's clearly you over. You know what I mean? You can have this conversation with them without letting your emotions get the best out of you. Yeah, you need to work on that. That's an inner game thing. That's a daily practice of making your mind and your emotions sharper. Okay. I have an alpha mindset course to help you with that. That's there for a reason. It's the first thing that I came out with because what your mind does and how you can handle your mental framework and your emotions is the most important thing more important than any, any strategy or technique. And the reason why is because strategies and techniques can come from a good mindset sometimes, even if they're not the greatest 
strategy or technique, it, it can come there, but you can't implement, you can't implement a strategy or technique. If your mindset's not right, if you're in a state of anxiety and, you know, upset and messed up and whatever, you're going to try to now bring something to the table that, you know, she lied about something and have it, you know, have a discussion about that. You're not going to push her into a truthful framework. She has to feel that the consequence of not telling the truth is worse than the consequence of telling the truth. She's done something bad. She's tried to hide it by telling the truth that will set her free. And even though it's not going to be great, okay, it was the action that she did that causes the consequence. The telling the truth part will make it easier for her, not the lying, continuing to lie about things. You have to send that message with your behavior that by coming clean, the best outcomes are going to happen. Whereas by trying to continue to conceal, it's only going to lead to more and more worse outcomes. And that has to be perceived in that conversation. It's a short-term thinking and a short-term experience in that conversation. Maybe objectively speaking, telling the truth would lead to worse outcomes than her continuing to try to hide it. That's the reality is that sometimes that's true. However, you don't want her thinking objectively in this circumstance. You want her in the short-term thinking and in this environment, she will confess and tell you everything because the perception is that that's going to make her feel a sense of relief, make her feel better, make her feel that the consequences are better for telling the truth. Most of the time, the consequences are objectively better for her just coming clean anyway, but you have to, she has to feel it. And in the moment, even if you catch somebody dead to rights, people will stick to stories and create reasonable doubt when they feel like those consequences are too great to come in clean. And a lot of times those consequences to coming clean is coming clean with themselves. They want to ego protect and with women in relationships, that's often the case. They want to be a good chimpanzee, not a bad chimpanzee, right? Remember, that's female motivation. Your, your guy motivation is to be useful or not useful. You want to get guys to lie? Make them feel less useful. This is why guys lie about things that affect their egos and their perception of abilities. Guys lie about their abilities. Guys embellish. Why do they, why do, they do that? Because men, we got to be useful chimps. And if we think we're going to be useless chimps, then we're going to try to ego protect. So women don't care as much about that. They care unless that usefulness or uselessness is tied in with being good. Okay. They want to be seen as good, as socially acceptably good, or, and they want to avoid being seen as socially acceptably bad. And so a lot of times they're, drive to not tell the truth because they don't want to be a bad girl. So now if in conversation, when you reveal that, Hey, I know that this something's going on, they feel a sense of not being judged and they feel a sense of understanding and empathy rather than being cornered and accused. They feel a sense more likely to create the sense of, you know, I'm not a bad chimpanzee because they did a bad thing. And in fact, I might be a worse chimpanzee if I lie about it. So in order to be the good girl, I have to come clean. You see, I'm a good girl who did something bad. That's the climate. It takes emotional control on your side, depending on how bad the offense is, to create that climate. All right? And if you don't create that climate, you're going to run into a lot of denial and objections and attempts at creating reasonable doubt and also attempts at, we'll say, shifting the blame to you. Because why do they shift the blame to you? Because if you're also a bad person, then I'm not a bad chimpanzee, even if I did this. That's a lie or dishonesty through influence, you see. Well, I don't know what I said. Maybe I didn't tell the truth, but you didn't tell the truth these other two times, you know. Or maybe I did talk to somebody, but you talk to other people all the time. You see, you get that. You get that from women a lot. You also get, well, I don't do that. I'm the exception to the rule. 
you know, oh, I hate it when women do this. Well, that's not me. I don't do that. When, in fact, she does do that sometimes, right? Why do they do that? They do that because they want to be seen as a good chimpanzee, as not only more socially acceptable, but at a higher, by being a good girl, she's at a good girl at a higher uh, hierarchy, you know, than other girls. They're not the same as the other girls. They're a better girl, you see. And so that's where that motivation is. A lot of times that lie through influence isn't going to be denying that they did something. It's going to be saying, but you do it too, or other people do it too. Or, well, that's normal though for that to happen, you know, or it's, re you know, they're going to defend themselves that way. You create a climate of them not feeling like they have to defend themselves by like agreeing and understanding with that stuff and showing em like empathy to that. Yeah, no, I understand a lot of people make this mistake. I'm not saying you're a bad person. Just tell me what, what, what happens so we can deal with it. That kind of thing will draw the truth out. 